Air pollution is a huge problem around the world and we know it impacts our health. Now we know by how much. Toxic air shortens our lives by 20 months on average. That's according to the Health Effects Institute in their latest report, The State of Global Air. Now that 20 number is an average. When you break things down region by region, you can see how Asia stands out. In South Asia, children lose 30 months of their lives. In East Asia, people lose an estimated 23 months. That is five times higher, or maybe a better way to think about it is five times worse than what you have in North America or Western Europe. Pollution is now a bigger killer than malaria and road accidents. It's as bad as smoking. Here's a closer look. Donning a face mask, part of the morning routine for many school kids in Delhi, where toxic smog engulfs the city for much of the year. Some days, 20 times above the WHO's recommended limit for dangerous fine particles in the air. India is home to 14 of the world's most polluted cities. Exposure to air pollution cuts the life expectancy of kids there by two and a half years by increasing their risk of chronic heart and lung disease, among other illnesses. Delhi's toxic air hit home for one mother when her young son fell ill. I also felt that my son was falling sick a lot with the pollution. You know, he was getting a lot of these allergic coughs and colds. Uh, and it's at that time, actually, that we realized that the, the problem was really alarming. In China, the entire population breathes air that exceeds the WHO's safety standard. Toxic air accounted for 1.2 million deaths in China in 2017. Air pollution has dropped in recent years due to government efforts to curb emissions. But this time lapse in Beijing shows the blankets of smog that worry many parents. The doctor says she's sick because of smog. She was in the hospital for six days because of this. I just picked her up. To the north, in Mongolia's capital, Ulaanbaatar, a reliance on coal for heating has turned the air hazardous. Families are making hard choices. This mother makes a three-hour round trip each week to see her daughter, who now lives with her grandparents in the countryside, under doctor's orders. After two bouts of pneumonia, Amina's immune system couldn't cope with the city air. I think she got sick because of the smoke. We were surrounded by it. Now she has fresh air. She hasn't gotten sick. She will get a sniffle here and there, but that usually passes easily. Their exodus, a stark warning for the future of much of Asia's urban areas, choking on dirty air. Joining me now is Dan Greenbaum, one of the authors of the study. Dan, um, now that we're armed with this data and this information, has any of the governments responded? Well, we've seen responses in, in places around the world. Certainly, there have been actions announced in places like India with their new national clean air program. Uh, and they are now saying, well, we really need to be serious about trying to implement this. And I think it's going to be an important part of their election discussion that they're having currently. The good news is that in China, we report that they have started to take action. So they've seen improvement, but they still have quite a ways to go. Now, you talk about China in the report uh, as a fairly standout country. Are there other countries that are doing a relatively good job compared to countries that are not really doing much? Well, they, they really are at the leading edge of the pack of the developing and emerging economies in terms of taking action about air pollution. Uh, India has started to. They have a new program to put natural gas into homes instead of burning uh, solid fuels. They are recall it requiring cleaner vehicles, the cleanest vehicles by 2020. But it's going to take a long time in those countries to deal with these, these problems. Uh, the other part of the world that really needs to, this kind of attention, Eastern Europe, has just started to deal with what fuels are burnt in homes um, and how those affect outdoor air pollution. 
Now, there are things that governments can do at the macro level, but I wonder what an individual can do to better improve the air they breathe. Uh, one thing that I look at is I see a lot of people in Asia with the face masks, and I've always wondered, do they really work? What personal actions can people take? Well, face masks actually, if they're well designed, can help reduce the exposure, but they're not going for the most part to be the major answer to this question. Um, uh, children can't be wearing these if they're at home in a crib or other places, they're not gonna be able to do that. I, kept, I think a couple of things, first of all, just in your daily actions, if you use less electricity, if you drive less, if you do other things that can reduce the emissions, you have a lot of control to do that. Secondly, there are on the market, some of them work quite well, uh, 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 machines that can filter the air coming into a, into a house, so that at least for your children inside their home, they would be cleaner. But the number one thing is really that personal action to say, I'm gonna use less energy, which hopefully will reduce air pollution for everyone. Dan Greenbaum, thank you. Thanks for having me.